What happens when two teenagers travel across the country visiting different UK cities? Well, you're about to find out. This week, we're in Manchester, a major city in the northwest of England with a rich industrial heritage. It's also home to Dock 10, the UK's leading television facility where some of the nation's best loved programmes are made. Two students 150 miles from home, what could possibly go wrong? Wait, which way was the hotel? So, Manchester, I've been there three times before now. Um, but it's not a city I can see myself getting bored of anytime soon. It's always plenty going on. And I mean, four hour coach journey, put Netflix on, shouldn't be a problem. There we go. The hoodies I don't mind folding because, you know, it's not, I think it's quite hard to crease a hoodie, but that will go in last. Underwear and socks. So, now I'll just take a couple of spare pairs. In case I shit my pants. Um, okay, so that's the majority of it packed. I'll just add a few things in the morning. But, Manchester. So excited. Like I said, it might take four hours to coach journey, but put the Netflix on. It will fly by. And when we get there, never mind the youth hostel. Been in there twice. Big boy now, grown up. Bye bye youth hostel. Hello Premier Inn. Not just Premier Inn, Premier Plus room. LED lights behind the bed. Mini fridge. I mean, come on. After Lydia's catastrophic accident and a quick trip to A&E, it was time for us to meet each other at our coach stop. So, just got to the coach station. Realised the coach is going to be about half an hour later than what we were originally expecting, which means we're going to get there later, which means we're going to be late for our harvester booking. Everything's going wrong. So, we're going to have to call the harvester, tell him that, well, try and rearrange it for, I don't know, eight o'clock maybe? Okay, all rearranged. Um, coach should be here any minute. And as if by magic, it's arrived. And the countdown to our destination is almost here. So, 34 minutes, which means we'll get there at about quarter past seven, later than what we wanted to. Uh, but the coach stopped for an hour to change the drivers and the driver that was supposed to swap with the one who was driving. Didn't turn up for ages. Stuck on the toilet or something. <laughs> so, we'll be there later than what we wanted to be. Um, about to rush to the hotel, I'm back, still laughing at the joke, um, and then rush to our meal tonight. Okay, we're here. Hello. Hello. you again. Undoubtedly. <laughs> Hopefully not Birmingham. Is that yours? Yep, got two. Okay, right. So, just got here. And, haven't told you this, Lydia, but we've got a private chauffeur for the week. His name's Andre. He's going to be driving us around Manchester. Not the cheapest of things, but 
you know, we're VIPs now, so. Yeah. So I think he's meeting us over here. Okay, he's over here. There's our private chauffeur for the week. He says what? Uh, yeah. Well, that didn't go to plan, did it? Anyway, a quick drive down the road and we arrive at our hotel. Let's just hope we have an amazing view right across Manchester. Okay. Just got here. Come in, bro. Weightlifting. Thank you. It's open. Okay. Floor 10, top floor. Be better have a good view. 1029, we're looking for. Or, okay, it's a VIP floor. Oh yeah, of course, the top floor is the Premier Plus rooms. That's where all the VIPs hang out. If our room doesn't overlook the Coronation Street, so we're getting a refund. I want to wake up to Gail Platt filming in the morning. Right, moment of truth. The lights on, where's the switch? Oh, ready. Here we go. Common in light here. Oh my god, we've got a bath. LEDs on the bed, the thing I've been talking about for ages. Oh my god. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, stuff that. Right. If I didn't see Coronation Street, we're going back to reception. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, oh, at least we've got a half a window. That's the main... Oh, Coronation... I mean, nothing better than an in industrial estate, is it? <laughs> oh my god, Samsung flat screen. <laughs> Check it, it's flat. Yep. How you turn it on? We'll get to that later. Right now, though, we need to chuck our back. What I was going to say is, right now, chuck our bags down. And we need to be at the harvester in... I hate to say it, 10 minutes. Let's go. Okay. We're now going to, um, going to go to the harvester because if you just, you, you can smell it calling me. It's okay. I was hoping for a view over the, the river, but can't get everything you, you wish for. But no, Harvester, like I said, for some reason this time I'm craving the starters more than the actual main meal, but... BBC? So whilst we're here, may, might, might as well share my knowledge of you. So this is Media City, home to Doc 10 which is the UK's leading television facility, home to The Voice, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, CBBC, Blue Peter, Newsround. Um, the list goes on and on, really. Uh, Question of Sport, Match of the Day, Judge Rinder, The Jeremy Carl Show, came from here. I feel like a tour guide. There's actually an episode of The Jeremy Carl Show where one of the guests, sort of, you know, they did that stupid thing where they apply to go on the TV show, but then they have a little hissy fit and run out of the studio. You actually see them running past the Costa. And Jeremy's just trying to calm them down whilst everyone's enjoying that Costa inside. But What a lovely view, all the scaffolding. Over there, that's where they film the Britain's Got Talent Manchester auditions in the Low Reef Centre. But we're going to go in now. After trying to get in through two of the wrong doors, we finally sat down. Just look at that gravy.
It's Tuesday, and we're getting ready to go to Dock 10. Ah, there she is. I've been looking for her for hours. Maybe it was the food we ate last night. So this is HQ2 here at Dock 10. Now this studio is home to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the ITV Leaders Debate and A Question of Sport, amongst many others. Just look at the size of this studio. So the three basic things that every studio needs here at Dock 10 is a green room, a place where our guests can chill out before they come on a show, whatever's been recorded, a uh, makeup room where guests can have their makeup done so they look beautiful on camera, um, and then a quick change room so whoever's on the show they might have two costumes for the duration of a programme so they can go in there, change a costume before coming back out onto the studio floor. So we'll have a look at the green room first of all. So I must say, I can imagine this being a very nice place to chill out. You've got lovely pictures on the walls of outside of Media City. It's quite mad to think that we're actually in there. Um, this sofa's look, ooh, that's quite comfy. So yeah, looks like a nice place to chill out before coming on a show. So that's the green room, all your necessities, microwave, drink machine, kettle. In here, we've got the makeup room, so like I said, any guests on a show or presenters, whatever, can come here, have the makeup done. Lovely stuff. And then in here, we've got the quick change room. So nice open space. Guests, presenters can come in, change their costume while going back out on the studio floor. So this is one of the star dressing rooms here at Doc 10. I mean, getting the VIP treatment, aren't they? You never know, you could have, could have had Jeremy Clarkson sat up here before recording Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Got a mini fridge, kettle, and a very comfy sofa. So you just got a tram to the Trafford Centre. Now this is the first time I came here a few months ago. I was flabbergasted by the size of this. So this is one part of it, the mall, but then you can walk across the road and the mall carries on all the way over there. So this, I mean, you can tell by the size of it, but it has a cinema in there with 20 screens, crazy golf, uh, laser quest, shops, you've got two JDs, if you like your shoes, um, restaurants, there's so much, to, so much here. And they're actually building a water park over there. Uh, yeah, a new water park coming in 2025, I think it is. And it has like 20 swimming pools or something like that inside it. I feel like I'm walking into Bucket and Pally. Okay, so automatic doors, very posh. I can't lie to you, I'm feeling quite anxious. It's so packed in here. I can just about move around. No, it is always dead in here. I, I don't know why, I thought, we're coming half term, so I was thinking, oh, probably be a bit busier, surely, but always empty. So, up we go. Look at the view. Really nice, isn't it? I still can't get over, though, how quiet it is. Come to the mall in Cribs Causeway, like, a very small percentage of the size of this place is the mall in Cribs Causeway, and that's always packed. You come here. And it's like, is it open? Okay, so if you ever stay in Manchester and you're looking for somewhere to eat, don't ever say there's not enough choice because TGI Fridays, Subway, and there's stuff underneath as well. It goes all the way around the bottom floor. <laughs>
Now, let's take a look at the iconic Blue Peter Garden. So this is Blue Peter Garden. You probably recognise some of it if you come here. It's well, mainly used in the summer for the, any outdoor stuff they do on Blue Peter, the world's longest running children's TV show. And if you look down here, you'll see some uh, hand prints and footprints and even paw prints on the right hand side there of some of the presenters and the animals that have appeared on the show over the years. Over here. <laughs> and if you come to Media City at night, you get a chance to take in all the lights on the buildings. You've got the ITV logo up there. BBC logo and the rainbow of colour goes well with the, the night sky in the background. But no, Blue Peter Garden, open to the public, so you can come here, sit on the bench, have a drink, and take in the surroundings, which like I said, you'll probably recognise if you've watched the show over the years. Again, the world's longest running children's TV show. Started uh, first broadcast in the late 1950s, so yeah. And just like that, it's Friday. Okay, so camera. That one go in there. And then obviously we need our coach entertainment. So that's where our iPad comes in handy. It's been a very fun trip, I must say. Although, it's going to be interesting when I get home because I always struggle getting home. Not literally struggle getting home, travelling home, but it's very sad when I get home. So, this might be the end of the documentary, or we might be finishing with some sad shots of me recovering from post holiday, what do you call it? Post holiday depression. Why are you laughing? It's not that funny, is it? <laughs> This could be now I'm going to shots of me crying, right? Cue that. And you're, you're just like sniggering. Cue that. She's wanting it to happen. So, almost ready. But what I want to do is just pull back the curtain one last time and just take in the, the view. Because breathtaking. Breathtaking isn't the word. Right across Manchester. Oh my god. <laughs> Goodbye LEDs. Getting the lift one last time. Got a full crew. Always happens, and look at the rain. We don't even know where we're going either. We sit over there. That little weird structure in the distance. Carnation Street set. So when I came in the first time, I had a nice view over that, and now you got the Aztec West. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of our trip to Manchester. 
The only question now, where will we go next?